Bergen Institute, the recreation room. And Atoli was at his special table, looking at the others. They were all too afraid to come close to him, and most of them tried to pretend he wasn't there. Except Edward. He was always near, running errands and fetching this or that for Anatoly. Even the orderlies was afraid of him. The medicine they gave him never seemed to work. Somehow, no medicine had any effect on him. But he never hurt anyone. He just sat there, studying the rest. He never spoke. He didn't need to. With just one look he could make you do things you never thought you would. And now he looked at Dan, Vicky, Francis and Oliver. He smiled as his gaze moved over their table. Dan just sat there with a blank look. Francis was praying, as he often did. Oliver looked around, saying something about butterflies, then started speaking Swedish to himself. Vicky, your mind was somewhat clear, but still as if you had just woke up. It felt like a dream. Two other girls was at the table to the side of you. Sarah and Jacqueline. Sarah played with her wooden ABC blocks. Or as she called them, her boxes. This one have my thumb. This one my nails. This one my happy bottom. She stopped and looked at you. I, I wanted to go with you, but you left, she said. Francis used to play with me. Now he's not here, but I don't, I don't like his tea. You looked over to Anatoly. Next to him, Edward muttered. No, I'm dirty. What the? No, I, I, I'm dirty. What? What? This won't do. I, 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 got, I got to clean up. Please, please, please let me clean up. Vicky, with one word, how do you react to this situation? Just one word. Confusion. And the camera fades out. This is my hell. I'm sorry. The words written on the wall echo in your head, Dan. And you are frozen, looking at them. Vicky is still unconscious, lying on the floor, soot everywhere, from long ago. One look at the kitchen window. You know you should see the outside, but you don't. The windows are black with soot. Or are they painted? You're not sure. There's still a kitchen table at the center, but all other furnitures are long gone. It's an old kitchen with a wood stove and a fireplace. Cabinets are open and the whole room is damaged from the fire. There's a wooden door to the left. It's closed. The handle is glowing red in the dark. Smoke rises from it, as the heat is slowly leaving it colorless. On the other wall there's another, smaller door, also closed. As you look down at Vicky, you see the pendant rise above her, like as if someone, not seen, is lifting it from her body. The string is still around her neck. What you do, Dan? Vicky, wake up! The pendant falls back and uh, Vicky moves. There's a presence here. You just know it, but you see no one. Vicky wakes up. 
with that one word, confused. Vicky, are you, are you all right? Uh, no, I'm so confused. Ah, uh, my head. God, it hurts. Dan, um, I take a look around him. Um, look down, you know, up and down, up and down. Uh, where are we, Dan? What's going on? Not real sure I- exactly. I think we need to get out of here. Where is here? I, Dan, I was just back in the hospital and now I'm again here. And then we are in Sweden or are we in America or are we in where we are? What What is going on? I mean, I don't think I can go forward anymore. I don't know what is what is real and what is not. That is a very good question. Like, are we really here? Like, that we have to go away from here? Or are we still in there with the doctor? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to go to the window and see if I can wipe the black off. You can do that. But uh, on the outside of the window, there's just darkness. I can't see anything. You can't see anything. No stars or moon or... Nothing. Just darkness. Pitch black. I don't know, Vicky, here. Hey, s- 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 just just try to relax for a minute. Let me, uh, let How me check How can I relax when I close my eyes? I see them. I see them. I saw them again and I don't want to see them. Yeah, I know. I checked the other door. The smaller door. Yeah, the one that did not have the glowing handle. I'm still worried about that one. You think it it might be a cellar door or maybe a a door to a pantry or something. Do you open it up? Does it open? Yeah, it's it's open. Yeah. The smaller door opens up and you see a wooden stairway leading down into a cellar. You hear someone or something whimper down there. It sounds like a child. Oh my god. Vicky, I, I, I think there's somebody down here. Really? Yeah, um, l- let me check. Wait, do you have I'll a right flashlight back. or anything like that? It's dark down there. No. There are candles in the kitchen and an old oil lamp. You also see matchsticks. Oh, yeah, okay, super. Um, yeah, let me see if I can get that oil lamp lit. Yeah, and give me the candle. I will go with you. I'm not planning on leaving you on your own. Okay. And then once we get light, I'll go downstairs. As you walk down the stairs, the sound fades away, and a piercing headache emerges. Ah. The door above you is slammed shut. Like again. What the? The cellar is dark filled with old rusty tools and trash. A voice is heard in your head, Dan. You recognize it. Dan, what will you do to get out? A sacrifice, yes. Give me a sacrifice and I might let you out. A piece of yourself, not too small. Nor too large. A little something of yourself, yes. A sacrifice. Show me that you dare. That I'm right about you. It's only Dan who hears this voice. What you do? Dan is going to try to just block it. I, I, I think it's madness. I don't quite understand it. I, I, um. I'm just going to try to block it out and ignore it and sort of uh, investigate the room a little bit, see if anything... Yeah. Do you want to roll, investigate, or perception? Let's let's just investigate 12. The room is filled with uh, rusty old tools and garbage, and there's a working bench by one wall. The wall is uh, made of stone. 
There's a window down here, but it's also black with soot. What does my gut feel about what I'm investigating? You don't think this is real, but still you are here. And uh, it's hard to make uh, heads or tail about all this. You don't really know. Well, that's about par for the course. All right, I'm just going to try to block that out. Vicky, I, I, I don't know what's going on. I thought I heard a voice. There's, uh, there's nothing down here, just a bunch of junk. Did any of those tools look to be uh, usable as a weapon? Yeah, there's a few knives, an old saw, hammers, and stuff like that. But it's everything is old. It's no modern tools. It's tools that they would use maybe a hundred years ago. Okay. Yeah. Uh, while I was looking around, I probably would have picked up a hammer, and I'm just kind of hanging on to it. And then I'm gonna take Vicky, and we're gonna leave this basement. You walk up to the to the door, and it's locked. Son of a bitch! How 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 it can be locked? Nobody was there with us. I don't know. Uh, hit it with my hammer. Yeah, you hit it. Tried. And use my shoulder and see if I can't force it open somehow. As you're hitting it with your hammer, I want you to roll endure injury. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, I rolled a 13. You're uh, hitting the door with your hammer. You get a blow to your head at the exact same time. Ah! You have a serious wound. Maybe a concussion. Fuck. Is he bleeding? No, he doesn't bleed. You see him twitch, but uh, you see no wound. Dan, what happened? Dan? I don't know. That couldn't possibly um, have just happened. You you hurt yourself? (laughs) I hit the door and I felt like I hit my own head. (laughs) You're gonna be here forever. I don't, uh, uh, only because Dan is a fucking pragmatist. I'm going to hit the door one more time <laughs> to verify my theory. I know it's stupid, but it's the only way it's the only way to find out if what I know or what I think is real or coincidence. I'm not going to hit it as hard as I did the first time, but I'm going to I'm going to hit it and see if uh, there is a painful reaction in my head. <laughs> okay. You don't have to roll in your injury, but uh, as you hit the door, uh, you hit yourself. God. God. Dan, talk to me. I got, there's this voice in my head telling me I can't get out of here. What voice? It says I gotta sacrifice something, like cut a piece of myself off or something. I, I, this. Dan, you're scaring me. I think I'm going crazy. Look look where we are and what is happening to us. You're not going crazy. It's just like weird things going on with both of us. Not only you. It's not only you. I don't know what to do. If I hit the door, it hurts my head. If I... Wait. They say that I'm going to be down here forever. There has to be a different exit. I don't know what kind of things you hear. It might be your... Maybe self-confidence you're losing uh, or anything else like that, you know, like your conscience. But I'm pretty sure there is a way out, okay? So just let me go down and let, let's let search. There has to be maybe a smaller window up. Like maybe we are not like exactly fully in the basement or something. The, the window. The window? Maybe we can break the window. Mm-hmm. Let's try it. Yeah, let's check out the window. See if it opens on its own. It's... Uh... You can't move uh, the hatches. Okay. Then I'm going to swing at the glass with my hammer. Just before you do that, you hear in your head. Oh, you're going to kill yourself. (laughs) I don't hit the glass with the hammer. I will stop mid-swing. Dan. Dan, just do it. The voice. The voice said I was going to kill myself. Dan, this is not... Let me do it. Let me do it. Let her do it. <laughs> I'm reaching for the hammer. Uh, 
I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Um, Do it. Listen, Dad, we can... Okay, not the hammer, okay? I can do that with my... It's just a glass. I can do it with my elbow, right? Okay? Yeah. Okay. I promise nothing should happen to you. So I try to, like, sort of, like, I, I bring my, um, my, my hand closer towards my face, you know, to get a nice swing, and I try to, like, poke, uh, basically, the window with my elbow, like, from my strength. You can roll... Act under pressure. Uh, that's ten. Ten. You hesitate a little, but uh, you do it. And your elbow is bouncing off the window. Dan, you have to roll in your injury. Seven. You get to decide if you die, receive a critical wound, or is... Knocked out. I'm going to say knocked out after I already received one critical head injury. Vicky, as you hit the window, you see Dan flies back over the cellar room and hits the wall, falling down unconscious. (gasps) Dan! With a bang. Dan! I run towards him and I start, like, shaking him, uh, you know, by his shoulders. Dan! 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 Dan, talk to me! What is going on? You hear a voice in your head, Vicky. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you kill him? <laughs> oh. Do you want to leave this place? Who are you? I live here. We have met before. Show yourself then. If we've met and I know you, show yourself. Come down here. What kind of tricks you're using? (laughs) Oh, you will see me soon. Once you sacrifice something, you can sacrifice something from Dan if he's still alive or from yourself. Do it. Sacrifice. The voice is gone. Dan, you're starting to wake up with a smashing headache. <clears throat> oh my god. What is going on? Dan. Dan, how are you feeling? Dan, how many fingers am I showing to you? Do you, do you see? It's a little blurry. Uh, oh my head. Dan, I didn't want to. Dan, I didn't mean it. It's okay. I know. I know, Vicky. I know. It's okay. Uh, Once more, I didn't believe you. I didn't believe you, but there is this voice. There is. I heard it too. Uh, uh, I don't even believe it sometimes, Vicky. Uh, that's like we're in my head. Dan, I think I know what is the problem. What? We are not believing. And that is why we are stuck in here. If this is the crazy governmental experiment on us or anything like that, then they want us to indulge into it. But instead, we are shutting down and we are not believing anything. So we are going against them. And that's why they are going to torture us more and more and more until we give in and they can see whatever they are planning on seeing. We have to start believing. I don't know if I can. The voice says I got to sacrifice a part of myself. What do I do? Just... Well, it did, I didn't set apart. It said, for me, it said sacrifice something or mine or yours. I think I know what I can do. I don't want what? to do that, but I think I know. What are you thinking? You know, I've seen the movies and things like that where you, when you have to do the sacrifice, you have to give away something what is the most precious to you. I know what I can give. What are you thinking about? I look down at my pendant. You can't... You can't give up your pendant. This room, we can't leave... We try. We, I'm hurting you. I, I, we are stuck in here in this madness, in this circle. If they want us to just test us out or something, and we have to give something. I, I don't want you to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to give my pendant, but... I have to. 
I mean, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but if, if we believe and get out of here, how are you going to make it out there without your pendant? I still will have my pills. I will have you. Or maybe when I will wake up, my pendant will be there. How many times I already thought that I lost my pendant since we've been here? Maybe I will just... Maybe I am still on that table of the doctors and I will wake up and the pendant will be on my neck. I've seen that. I've seen it. We are all there with him. Yeah. You're, you're probably right. I'm just... I, I'm, I'm overthinking. The stress of this is just... <sighs> all right. What, what do you... What do we do? Okay, okay. So I, I, I unclip my pendant. I take it off from my neck, and uh, I just sort of rise it up a little bit, and in this um, sort of empty room, and I just say, "Okay, take it. Just take it. Come and take it." Nothing happens. What's going on? Do you feel anything? Did you hear a voice? I. Uh, I don't know why it's not working. I'm telling you, just take it. And I throw the pendant into the wall. It bounces off the wall and down into the, onto the floor. And it lies there. I don't think this is going to work. I'm going to go pick up her pendant and walk it back to her. I'm talking in my head. Hey, do you hear me? Can you hear me? You get no answer, but... Uh... You feel this place is haunted. It's old. It has been like this for maybe a hundred years. Maybe more. And uh, the presence here, you recognize it. You have seen it a couple of times before. The first time you saw it was at a gas station. It has followed you. And now you're here. At its home. The feeling that I get from this place is not good. And I will give Vicky just this sort of a glancing, worried look. And then I'm going to start thinking about what it said to me. Because I'm thinking I gotta honk off a, a pound of flesh or something. You don't know exactly how, but you get a name in your head. It's a foreign name. Elsa. Huh. I don't think the pendant's gonna work, Vicky. What, 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 what do you mean? It has to work. Like, it's a sacrifice. It's the most important thing to me, ever. I think they want something. I think they want something better. What can be better? <laughs> My foot. An arm? This is useless. Like, this is nonsense. This is just like, no. They always want something what is dear to you. I don't know. I mean, the pendant didn't work. I, I, I don't have anything else. I, all I have is me. I reach out to take the pendant from him. Or you. I don't know. I, you, maybe I lose a finger or it's something. It's not right. Because, for example, my pendant is more important to me than my life. Why would they want your f finger? <laughs> I don't know. The, the voice in my head said something not too small, something not too big. Oh, maybe finger's not enough. Maybe it wants a whole hand. Maybe, like in the old stories, they want your soul. You know the stories where you sell your soul to a devil? Yeah, but... All right. Um, I'm just going to yell out, What do you want? There's no answer. Son of a bitch. I, I don't know what to do, Vicky. I, I mean, at this, what do I do? Just start hacking off pieces of my body until something happens? What if I cut off too much? No, cutting body part. No, no, it's not. It's something different. I can't be, I, I'm sure it's like, it has supposed to be like a puzzle or something. God, I need my log. My luck from my pendant just to figure this out. Maybe there's something here I'm not seeing. I'm going to start examining the walls closely, like, you know, running my hands down the walls looking for anything that I might have missed. Give me a see-through-the-illusion roll. Five. 
you don't see anything uh, different and you, you find uh, nothing out of place. But you hear the voice again in your head. I don't think you were so fucking scared then. Who are you? What am I supposed to do? What do you want? I don't want you. And I Well, you fucking got us, and so now what are you going to do? <laughs> the question is, what are you going to do, Dad? Are you scared? Don't you want to know what's upstairs? <laughs> what's upstairs? The voice is gone. I, I'm starting to, I don't know, I panic a little bit. I want to, I'm going to run, I, I, I know this is foolish, but I'm going to run up and I'm going to check the door at the top of the stairs again. It's uh, locked. I figured as much. Uh, what is the, like, when I was also at the door, did I see the lock? Like, what kind of lock is that? It was an old uh, lock, not very sturdy or anything. Like on an inner door in the house. All right. So I would like to try to focus and maybe a little bit more, not like on the room itself here, right? But more, I would like to remember again, uh, because I am, well, I wanted to become an actress, right? In acting is important, you know, for acting, it's important to read and understand a lot of things. And, uh, you know, my character read books and she was very interested in these myths and legends and stories, right? Um, and I, in my mind, because I believe that this is a weird kind of game, I tried to search like for options then you know some sort of deities require sacrifices from people like from the stories if i heard what kind of options i would have like sort of use my you know intuition like what their request might be like actually you know try to maybe sum up it from the stories what does what is the most common in these myths and legends if you understand my question you can uh, roll a reason 11. 11. You know that uh, many sacrifices uh, in the old day in the north was uh, self-sacrifices or blood prices. From, uh, doesn't have to be from the person, him or herself. It can be from another sacrifice, even an animal in some cases. And you think that this is probably something like that. It can also be just blood. Dan, what about, you know, there are so many stories like, you know, uh, I don't know about the demons and, you know, vampires and all these kind of weird creatures, right? Where they also required sacrifices and, uh, you know, most of the time, like, it's not necessarily a, like you say, you know, like the the finger or feet or something. What about if they just want your blood? Like, what if you know we just cut ourselves a little bit and I don't know, like pour our blood into a glass or something, and then and, and and that's that. Do you think that would work? Maybe, maybe it should. Like it worked in many stories before. Again, from the books and movies, myths, legends. So Dan would go back over to where the tools are and find the sharpest looking rusty knife, the least rustiest rusty knife. You find a whetstone, you can probably use that to remove rust and make it a little sharper. Um, all right, uh, let me uh, let me see if I can get this knife to work. Look, look around and see if you can find a, a bowl or a cup or a jar maybe. Yeah, I would try and go in and find something like that where we could pour in some blood. You find uh, a few jars uh, in the cellar. Uh, it's uh, some of them uh, have all dirt in them, dried up now. 
and uh, most of them are ceramic, old ceramic uh, pots and jars and stuff like that. Yeah, I would take one of them and I would like spill out like the the dirt which can be found in there. I would even clean it a little bit with my hand, just like for no specific reason. I just kind of feel like I have to clean it out, you know. And then, then I would bring it closer to Dan. And you sharp, uh, you sharpen a knife. And then what do you do? I'm gonna do this, and I'll take the 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 thing from Vicky, and with the knife, I will. I'm gonna open up a vein in my arm. <laughs> well, stop. Do it for your palm. You know. They used to do it through the palm. I don't know if that's gonna give me enough. It will. I saw that in the movies. All right, all right, Vicky. Okay, okay. Slice up in my hand, my palm. You can roll, act under pressure. Six. You do it. It hurts like hell, but you do it. And uh, how much blood are you trying to get out of it? I'm shooting for, uh, I don't know, like a, a quarter cup. Yeah, you do that and, uh, well, nothing happens. What do you do with the, the jar after? Uh, so uh, when, once he does that, actually, first, I want to tear off a part of my dress, like a small part of it, like, you know, to get sort of a bandage. And I first would like to rub up uh, his hand. Like, you know, wrap it around uh, Dan's hand to maybe, you know, stop the bleeding and, you know, protect the wound from any infections. Do you think this is enough? Uh, I, I think so, but do you think they won't bind to you? Uh, I don't, I don't think, th- I don't think so. Uh, I mean, it, it made it sound like one or the other. Vicky, I want you to roll perception. Observe a situation. Eight and seven. Uh, Fifteen and plus one, sixteen. You notice that one drop of blood from Dan's hand hit the cellar floor. Uh, the floor is uh, really a hard-packed dirt. And uh, the drop of blood is instantly gone. It's like the ground is taking it to itself. Okay, so when I see that, I want to... I I grab the pot and I just pour the full blood on the ground. You pour it on the ground and you both see that uh, the ground is uh, swallowing the blood. And uh, from uh, upstairs, you you see the door is opening. Dan, it it worked. worked. Dan, it worked. Let's get out of here. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep the knife in my hand. You come back up to the kitchen. The other door is still closed. That's the only other door in the kitchen? Yeah. Yeah, go check that door. Listen, do I hear anything on the other side of it? You don't hear anything. Yeah, uh, open the door. The door opens up and you, you see a hallway. It's leading to the front door to the right. It's a wooden double door with glass windows, black with soot. Another closed door can be seen on the other side from the kitchen. To the left, uh, the hallways comes out into a larger area with a stair leading up to the second floor. From the large area, there's two doors, one to the left and one to the right. Both are closed. There are no furnitures here and the floor creaks. And your weight. Wait a minute. Is Francis just missing? Am I expecting him here? The last thing you remember about Francis and Oliver is when you arrived at the farm and it was burning and you saw your father or a younger version, version of your father ran into the burning building and then came out again with that large man with a spear who killed him. And then uh, something happened. An explosion or something centered around Vicky. Explosion of light. 
and then everything went black and you woke up in the kitchen. So yeah, where is Francis and Oliver? I'm thinking about leaving this house and as just as I have those thoughts, I realize Francis and Oliver and I will turn to look at Vicky and I'll go, what if Francis and Oliver are in this house? Where did they go? When uh, Dan asks me this question, I again look down at my pendant, which I once again uh, hang up on my neck. And I touch my pendant and I look at it. It looks like it always does. Dan? Do you want to uh, wait here while I check out the other rooms? I got to make sure they're not here. I can't I can't leave them here if they're here. What if I think they will not be here? Well, do, do we just take that chance? Maybe this pendant, you know, it, it, it's protecting me. And in that situation out there, I wanted to be safe. I wanted to be protected. I wanted to protect you. And maybe my pendant... Oh, that sounds creepy and crazy, but... Have you seen the light? I remember something like that. What if my pendant just moved us here to safety? So you just want to get out? I don't know. That, that sounds stupid and crazy. Maybe we should check the rooms if Francis and Oliver is there. <sighs> I just want to go home. You see a movement in the larger area below the stairs to the left. It seems like there's a body on the floor in the dark. It's moving. And as you're holding up the lantern, the old oil lamp, you see someone is blinking. You see the eyes of someone. Did you see that? Hello? Francis? Oliver? <laughs> Francis, is that you? Hold the light up, see if I can get a little better look. You see a shape of a man on the floor with heavy burns all over him. Oh my god. He's trying to crawl towards you, buddy doesn't get anywhere. It's like he's uh, melted into the floor. Oh my god. Oliver? Yeah, I'm gonna run over there to him and uh, set the lantern down and see if there's uh, anything I can do to help. A burned body of a man lies in the middle of the larger area, below the stairs. He lifts his head, and you see your father's eyes staring at you, Dan. He cries out, Kill me! Please kill me! Over and over again. Vicky, you see that it is Daniel after a while. What do you do? I approach uh, uh, Dan and Daniel. But I'm not saying anything because I don't even know what I could say in this situation. I sort of would try to place my hand like on the shoulder of Dan, like or almost like supporting him and myself at the same time in, in this tragic situation. And Dan? Uh, I'm kind of in shock if I see my father's eyes. I'm just gonna. I'm just kind of frozen there for a minute, and I don't know what to do. He wants me to kill him. Kill me! He's, it hurts so bad. He's suffering, Dan. Kill me! Nobody would be able to help him in this situation. You know, heal him. Okay, I'm, so, I'm sorry, and I will drive the knife into the center of his chest. You do it. He dies, and it's silent. There's a door to the left in this room, and one to the right. It's also the, the front door, the double door, and another door on the opposite wall of the hallway, uh, opposite to the kitchen. And stairs. And the stairs. Where do you go? What do you do? 
All right, we got to we, we're gonna have to look and see if Francis and and Oliver are in here. Yes. I'll I go to the closest door first, and I'm going to start yelling, Francis, Oliver. The closest door is the the one in the hallway just behind you. At the same time, I would also myself try to move towards the doors which are the most far away, actually, as well. Like as, I, and I would run, like almost run, like in a hurry, you know. And I also would be shouting, "Oliver, Oliver, Francis!" You are going to the left door in the larger area. Dan, when you open the door, you see a long room that goes out into a wing to the right. There are no other doors here, but plenty of windows, especially in the round wing area. As in the other rooms, the windows are black. You can't see anything on the outside. In the center of the room, there's a long oak table with 12 heavy chairs. Several geometric patterns and symbols are engraved into the table. They are all done with a sharp object by an amateur's hands, destroying the fine table. At the center of the table you see an old oil lamp. It's burning, giving the room a dim light. Who has the other oil lamp, Vicky or Dan? I would let Vicky. I had actually a candle, like Dan took the oil lamp and I took the candle. All right, so then I've got the lamp. Vicky, as you come to your door, you look into a large living room. It extends into another wing at the back of the house. It's only the shape of the room that gives you the idea that this once was the living room. Now it contains six old steel tables and some kind of machines next to each. On top of each machine is a glass container with a leather-like tube going to the table and the bodies who lies on them. At the end of the tube, a long needle is attached with a hook at the end, and some of them are driven into the bodies. As you look into the room, the container starts to fill up with light blue liquid. A glow emerges from it and gives the room an airy feel. There's a desk to the right side of the room, old and burned. But one thing catches your eye. A photo frame with an old yellow picture. Something is written on the actual photo. You are drawn towards it. Dan, what do you do? I will investigate the symbols on the table. Do I recognize them? It's the same symbols that Edvard Gron used with his ritual and that you saw on the computer screen in Kiruna at Daniel's apartment. It's also the same that you saw in that alleyway. You don't know how long ago it was when you opened the door with that tall figure who claimed to be your father. I trace some of the symbols with my finger just as I'm investigating. There's nothing else in the room besides the, the lamp? No. All right, then I'm going to leave this room. Vicky, what do you do? So, um, because I am drawn towards that picture, I will move towards it, but it's going to be more like a reflex, right? I'm moving towards it, but I'm not thinking about the action. What I'm thinking about is, I'm counting one more time how many tables I see. Seven, right? Six. Six. Okay. Uh, six tables. Um... I immediately remember what I've seen before Dan woke me up in here. I've seen Dan, Oliver, Francis, me, Sarah, Jacqueline, six people in the room, on the tables. Does does that feel like deja vu for me? You can roll, see through the illusion. Mm -hmm. Eight, two, and plus two, so fourteen. Fourteen. No, it's not you. The bodies on the table's hair are all dead and very old. They have uh, soldiers' clothes on. Mm -hmm. Uniforms from maybe from Second World War. 
You don't know what country they they are from. You don't recognize it. It's not Germans or mm-hmm. not Englishmen or Americans. It's something else. So then a little bit feeling more like maybe calm because I was like more worried about almost like expecting to see myself on these tables in here, right? Um, I calm down and I move towards that picture faster and I take the picture to read what's written on it. And Dan, where do you go? Dan, when he leaves this room, Dan's going to go to where Vicky is just to sort of check in and, and, and tell her, hey, I'm going to I'm going to go check upstairs and then do I see what she sees? Yeah, you do. So I just sort of stop and let that sentence trail off as I observe the room. Vicky, the photo could be of a very young movie star, maybe. No one you recognize, though. Mm. The text says, Für Ernst Kruger mit Liebe Elsa. The style of the photo is maybe from the 40s. As you're lifting up the photo, something uh, drops from behind the picture as the frame is broken. It looks like a letter, a piece of paper that falls to the floor. I would take it and I would read it as well, even if I don't understand what it's written. Like, I would take a look at what kind of language they use, you know. It's uh, it's actually written in English. And as you are reading it, we, we hear the... The one who wrote the letter. Elsa, I love you with all my heart and I can't wait to be back in your arms again. I know I can't send you this letter, but one day you might get to read it. I've been practicing my English, but it gets better for each day, I think. You probably think I'm dead, but I managed to get to Sweden with the papers from a fallen US soldier. When I got here, things weren't as I thought they would be. The Nazis have a strong grip here. There is something that reminds me of the Hitler Jugend here as well. They are even researching genetics and working on something that might have something to do with the fatherland. At first, I thought about telling them who I am and get help. But there are things here that no man should know or work on. There's evil here. They are using some sort of liquid. I've managed to get a sample and I will need some time to study this and what it does. I'm at an old farm. I found traces of this and other experiments here. They've used it as a headquarters, I think, but now they are gone. I've been here for a week. I know I will have to leave soon. There's a pilot that will take me south, and then I'm off for America. But before I go, there is a bunker, half day's walk to the vest. I want to see if I can find out anything more about that place first. (sighs) I know, I ride too much, and it's dangerous. If anyone gets their hands on this, but... I can't stop myself. I wish I had a dictaphone to help with all my notes. Mm. With much love, Hans Kruger. Dan, there's another door in the in the large room on the other side from the living room. Do you go to the stairs or do you go to that door? Uh, I'll go check out that door first. And Vicky, you're you're reading the letter at the moment. The door opens up to that room and you you see that it is an old study or a library the walls in this room is covered with shelves and all destroyed books a desk in the center of the room is covered with papers yellow and burned on each paper symbol or geometric shape is drawn behind the desk an old man sits he look up with tired eyes I, I'm sorry, there's no way out from here for you. The man is slender, tall, around 60 years old, dressed in old clothes. His eyes are gray with cataract, and he's almost bald. The ink pen in his hand and a newly drawn circle on the old paper in front of him. As you enter, he dipped the pen in an open wound on his arm and start to draw an upside-down triangle in the center of the circle. What do you do? Who are you? The circle and the triangle starts to glow. The man looks up at you. Uh, at last, 
I won't hear him no more. Anatoly can't touch me. Thank you. The floor under him opens up. Flames shoots up, engulfing the man. Hans is pulling him down, and as he screams, the floor closes above him, leaving you with the smell of burned flesh. Okay. Vicky, you have uh, read the letter. What do you do now? Um, I would put the letter down on the table beside the picture, and uh, I think that I would move towards another door. Uh, there's no more doors on this floor. It's the stairway. I would go up. As you walk out from the living room, you see uh, Dan is standing in the doorway uh, on the other side of uh, this hall. Dan, you see uh, Vicky comes out now. I'm not going to tell her about what I just saw. I will follow her up the stairs. As you walk up the stairs, a feeling of dread comes over you. At the top of the stairs, you see a woman dressed in black, smiling down at you. Dan, you're finally here. Please come. Who are you? She reaches out her arms as to embrace you. It's the same woman that have been haunting you. But now you see her clearly. Long black hair, green, beautiful eyes, and an era that suits you both. You want to go to her, both of you. What do you do? When Dan says, asks like uh, who who you are, and probably before like I don't know, like the wish, sort of like fighting the wish to go towards her, I would say probably Lee. Her name is Elsa. You made all this. Welcome home. Yes, I am Elsa. This is not home. I didn't make this. We want to leave. Oh, Dad. You are in control. But you will need to do your sacrifices. Yes, there's more than one. For the both of you. Then she slowly fades away and soot falls to the floor where she was. The upper hallway leads to four closed doors. There's no windows here. What do you do? I look at that. Let me check these rooms real quick and see if we can find Oliver and Francis and then let's get the fuck out of here if we can. You walk towards the first door, to the left or to the right? Left, and I will, like, knock and yell Francis and Oliver before I enter. There's no answer. As you open the door, you see a small bedroom. Old wooden toys on the floor. The window black with soot. No furnitures. And children drawings on the wall. That's what you see, Dan. Vicky, you see an empty room. Daylight shines in through the window. It's your old room from when you were a child, home in Latvia. Dan is gone, and the door behind you is closed, locked. A man in the center of the room turns. It's Anatoly. Girl, make a choice. Give yourself to me, or set yourself free. You feel the cold grip of a knife in your hand. What do you do? Uh, I look down at the knife, and I look back at Anatoly, and down at the knife, and then back at Anatoly. And I feel like sort of stuck in this type of movement. He takes a step towards you. I take a step backwards away from him. Your back hit the door behind you. He looks intent to do something to you. I take a step closer towards him. And I want to move as close to him uh, that he would be in the reach like of my hand, for example. I would be in the reach of his hand. And then I would try 
to be as quick as I can be. If I need, like, you know, I would jump up a little bit since I'm not very tall. And I want to stab that knife into his neck. As he is getting close to you and you to him, it, uh, the look on his face is, uh, is that of a victory. And it looks like he's about to embrace you. And you can roll violence. Nine minus two is seven in plus four to eleven. Yeah, eleven. You inflict damage. You penetrate uh, his neck and you see a uh, surprise in his eyes. And he takes a step backwards and you see his hand comes back and he, he hits at you. You can either rule perception or reflexes. Uh, he hits you, but it, it's, just a, it's just a glance and... You don't fall or anything, and uh, it doesn't hurt very much. You step to the side, and uh, you get the knife out from his neck, and it's uh, it's pouring blood from his wound. He looks angry, and uh, whatever he's, uh, he's about to do, it won't be good. What do you do? I move to the most probably farthest corner from him, like, you know, and I keep my, like, I hold knife of both, no, no, I hold knife of one of my hands, right? I hold my pendant with my other hand, and yeah, and I keep my arm, which holds knife extended, that, you know, basically, and, uh, you know, with the sharp blades poking forward, like that, you know, if he will try to come to me, like he will poke first at my knife. Yeah, he walks towards you, angry. There's only one way out from here. Either you kill me, or you kill yourself, or you're mine. And he's over you. So uh, is there a way for me to stab him again? Yeah. Violence. <sighs> it's seven and five, so it's th- twelve, and violence is minus two for me, so it's ten. You stab him uh, in the guts. You don't do as much damage as you want to, and uh, you're still having the knife in your hand, and he. He lies on top of you and his uh, his hands grips your neck and he starts to strangle you. Your hands are still free though, so you can keep on stabbing if you want or try to get away. Uh, no, I let go of the knife. Obviously, you know, I, I, I start crying and I grip my pendant again, you know, with uh, like... I think my reflexes sort of would kick in and probably my legs like would kick really badly, right? You know, like trying to push him away with my legs. But I would also sort of if... In my mind, I would try to prove to myself holding on my pendant that this is all not real. You can roll violence or act under pressure. Whichever is higher. Act under pressure. It's eight and minus one, it's seven. <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, strangling you and uh, you you can't seem to get away and you have to roll and your injury. Four to this, right? Yes. It's twelve. Twelve. You can't breathe and you feel something snaps in your neck. You don't know how bad it is, but you have a serious wound in your neck. Okay, so can I still move my arms? Yeah. Okay, now then in panic, fuck the pendant, fuck everything, absolutely everything, and I claw his face with my nails. Yeah, violence. Okay, so it's eight and it's four, it's twelve, and my violence is minus two, so it's ten. Ten. You claw at his face and you you feel his skin crawl under your nails. You open up claw wounds on his face, but he's still strangling you. 
Okay, so I claw. I still. I keep like clawing his face and uh, keep kicking my legs because he's strangling. So I can't actually scream, but there would be like this scream color of frozen in my face, and I would do that probably for a bit more. But realizing that I can't get out, I I drop my hands to my sides. You feel the knife. It's lying on the floor. You will soon be unconscious. Okay. Uh, I, I, when I was lowering my arms to my sides, I was almost like giving up. But then again, then I feel like the knife, like this, it's like that cold metal to my skin. Probably like the last bit, like would kick in of the adrenaline in me, and I would grab one more time this knife, and then this time I would try to just kind of stab it into his face, like into his eye. I'm going to give you the option to rule either violence or coolness. Coolness. It's seven and four. It's eleven and minus one. It's fucking ten! You hit him in the face with a knife. It doesn't go into his eyes. Uh, You cut open his... uh, the side of his face. And he screams a little bit and shakes it off and he presses harder and you have to roll endure injury. Five. You have a choice to make. Either you lose conscious, you get a critical wound, or you die. Well, before I die, when I am being strangled, I think that I would be like, you know, I lose my conscience. Everything goes black. Dan, you're looking into this uh, empty bedroom with the, uh, let's see, with the wooden toys and the uh, children drawings on the walls. Vicky is standing next to you and she falls to the ground, unconscious. What do you do? Vicky, Vicky, um, I'm going to get, you know, drop to my knees and like pat her face, see if I can, you know, get her to wake up because I'm thinking... You know, she's fainted. It's it's blood sugar or uh, stress or, you know, something like that. As you do that, you see uh, marks on her neck from strangling. Oh, my God. Vicky? Vicky? Shake her a little harder. Yeah, the bruises is uh, getting worse and worse. Oh, my God. And you hear her neck. Something pops in there. I'm gonna like spring back. That's gonna freak me out. And I go, you know, I'm on my butt looking at her. Vicky. She's still. Crawl back over and touch her face. It's cold to the touch. I'm going to feel her neck for a pulse. You don't feel a pulse. Dan just breaks down. And I say her name and I cry. You don't have to rule. Keep it together. Somehow you're... All this doesn't affect you as much as you... As you think it would. And Vicky gasps and wake up. Looking at you. Oh my god. I thought you were dead. The second when I wake up and I open my eyes, at first, uh, do, do you remember everything that happened, correct? Like what I've seen with Anatoly. Yeah. So I don't fully yes. recognize that Dan is in front of me and I'm still in that shock on the last moment what was happening to me. And once again, I just like kind of gasp out and I start like kicking and because Dan if Dan was leaning close to me I would again like do this thing where I said that I was clawing his face so I would start with my hands like strike to go towards Dan's face and I would start screaming like you know get away from me get away from me it's it's me it's me you can roll violence and Dan you can roll avoid harm she claws you over the face R- really, really hard over one of your eyes. And, uh, uh, well. I'll take the critical wound. Yeah. 
As you I don't see anything on the left back. eye again. God damn, Mickey, it's me, it's me! Ah. Dan? Are you okay? Can, can you breathe? I can. What is... I started, like, grabbing towards my neck now, like, as if to feel if I feel, like, any hands or anything. Like, you know, I'm gasping for air. Dan, what? Where is Anatoly? Anatoly? What are you talking about? Dan. Is that who did that? Yes. It was him. And, um, he was strangling me. Killing me. I I had a knife. I tried. I had a knife. I didn't succeed. And... <clears throat> I, my, my neck, it cracked. Are you okay? Can you, can you move your neck? You can feel all your fingers and toes, right? Dan, wh- why are you bleeding? Oh, uh, I forgot for a second. Uh, yeah, um, well, you did that. What do you mean I did that? It's all right. It's all right. You were just, you just freaked out for a I second. I couldn't do that to you. That, that was not you. That was Anatoly. I saw him die, and I, I saw him with my own eyes. He said, either I have to kill myself, or he's going to take me. He, he tried to kill me. You're all right. Um, You're okay. Yeah. Um, Do you think we can leave? Uh, I, 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 I don't know if I can move. My whole body in shock would be absolutely trembling. Like, my hands would be trembling, like, you know, the leaves of a tree in the wind, you know? Same for my legs. I, myself, the whole me will be trembling a lot. All right, you know what? Just wait here for a second. I'm, I want to go check the front door. If, if it opens, I'll come back and get you, and we're going to get out of here. I'll, I'll carry you out if I have to. Okay, Dan. Okay. All right, uh, I'll be right back, and um, I, I'm going to run down the stairs uh, to the front door and check it. It's locked. Do you want to try to open it with violence? No, you taught me a pretty good lesson on that one. I'm going to... No, I'm going to quickly run back upstairs. I don't want to leave Vicky alone any... a second longer than I absolutely have to. Yeah. Yeah, you get back. It's locked. It's fucking locked. Okay. We are stuck in here. We'll never leave. Not until he kills us. He will come back and he will try to kill me. He wanted me. But he will get me. He's not going to get you. (laughs) We're going to find a way out of here. There's uh, three more doors in this corridor. Check the next one. You open the, the next one on the opposite wall. Yeah. You look into a small room, almost completely dark. You don't even see the walls in here. Can I observe a situation? Please do. You notice one thing. The floor is completely covered in spikes going up from below the floor and up a couple of inches. If you were to walk into this room, you would puncture your feet and probably fall and die. I will close that door. You have two two, uh, questions if you want to. What is my best way through this? There's uh, two other doors. Maybe the answer lies within one of those. What can I use to my advantage? And don't say something inside one of those rooms. He's trying to kill us. You know that, right? We're not going to get out of this one I mean, alive. I know. <laughs> the next door. Are you with him, uh, Vicky, or are you waiting? I would have insisted that she rest. Yeah, I wouldn't go. Yeah. I'm still concerned about that cracking noise in her neck. If she feels up to it and insists, I'm not going to No, I, w- I would be too shaken. Yeah. Uh, I, I couldn't go yet. No. Dan, you see a circle on the floor. And within that circle, Francis sits in prayer. Oh my God, Francis! Vicky is not there anymore, and the door behind you is closed, but you don't remember walking in. 
On the opposite wall, a girl is nailed to it, large spikes through wrists and ankles. She's alive, looking at Francis, him at her. You hear him whisper, Sarah. Then he says, do you want to lead or follow? And you know it's aimed at you then. It doesn't sound as Francis though. It's as if uh, someone else speaks through him. Do you want to follow and stay here? Kill me. Do you want to lead and leave? Kill her. You have a rusty old axe in your hands. What do you do? I'm shocked. Um, and Vicky has like disappeared. The room behind me is gone. Yeah, the door is closed, and you don't remember walking into the room. Vicky, you saw Dan open the mm-hmm. the door further up in the corridor and walk in and close the door behind him. Dan, I, I gotta check on Francis. It, it does does he look like himself? Yeah. He does. Is he like tranced out? Can he tell that I'm there or is... He doesn't look at you. He only looks at Sarah. Yeah. How does she look? She's naked and big nails through her legs and hands. She looks uh, close to death. All right. If that's my way out, then I... I will... I'll be putting her out of her misery. Yeah. Yeah. How do you do it? Just as quickly as I can to the the center of her head, her like the crown of her forehead and head. Yeah. Frontal lobe. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to quick, painless. I don't. You hit her hard over the head. She doesn't die. She starts to scream and move. And Francis starts to scream and cry and scream. She screams, cries. Is she calling you a murderer? Hit her again. You hit her again and with the same result. But a a part of her head is open now. You see the brain. It's pouring out from the side. And she's still screaming at you. You fucking... Idiot! What are you trying to do? You bloody murderer! And Francis is screaming the same thing. Do you want to hit her again? Yeah, uh, I am at this point probably crying and saying, I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and I, I'm gonna keep striking until it stops. She dies. Francis uh, calms down a bit, lowers his head and starts to pray again. You have blood all over you, and you hear Francis say, You will find your prize in the master bedroom. You may leave now. Then Francis is gone. Sarah is gone. And you are standing in the doorway. Vicky, you see Dan coming out in the corridor again. He was just gone one second. How does he look like? Bloody. Dan? Pale, and my mouth is hanging open, and my eyes are red. Dan, what happened? Dan, are you alright? Dan, are you hurt? I'm fine. I'm fine. I think the way out's in this room. I would have now the power and the energy to kind of stand up and actually run towards him. That I would be expecting to search for injuries. Are you hurt? Are you hurt? Did they hurt you, Dan? Are you hurt? Um, I'm, I'm all right. It's not my blood. What happened? What do you mean it's not your blood? I'll tell you later. Uh, here, let's let's go in here, and I will take her hand and go uh, into the other room, which I'm assuming is the master bedroom. You open the door and you see a large bedroom with an old double bed. Nothing else. The old sheets are yellow with age and stained with body fluids. The smell in hair is that of old sex and sweat. On the bed you see a rusty old revolver. Uh, that's not what I was expecting. Okay, go pick up the revolver and inspect it. 
It's loaded with the six bullets. What the hell am I supposed to do with this? He said this was what I needed. Uh, Who said that, Dan? What are you talking about? There was something in that other room. He told me this was going to be... I thought he meant this was going to be the way out. What I would need is in here. What am I supposed to do with this? You both feel a, a draft from the corridor, the hallway. A draft? Fresh air. Did you feel that? Maybe the door is open. All right. Calm down, we can go out. Let's go. As you walk down and head towards the front doors, you notice that they are open. It's night outside, but not as dark as you thought it would be. From the outside, most of the walls are gone. The roof has fallen in, and there is no doors left. You just walked out from a burned-down ruin, and there's no trace of the house you were in. The ruin looks old, like it was a long time ago the fire happened. You look around, there's no one to be seen. The two of you are alone, but you are out, breathing fresh air again. This is not the farm you remember. It's an old ruin inside the forest. Thank you for listening to The Experiment, a cult divinity lost actual play podcast from TTRP Theater featuring Peter Samuelson, Minta Krikomi, Mitchell Wallace, and myself, Curtis Wilkins. The game Cult Divinity Lost is produced by Helmgast. Music used in this episode is thanks to Coag and Incompetech. Find all of our productions at ttrptheater.com. If you enjoyed this podcast or any of our other productions, consider supporting TTRP Theater by visiting our Patreon page today. Exclusive benefits start for as little as $1. Thanks again from Peter, Minta, Mitchell, myself, and all of us here at TTRP Theater.